Hello, my name is Diego Rubina. Uh, I work at the company Space Application Services in Belgium. And uh, this is uh, a presentation about the Moonwalk project. The Moonwalk project aims at creating the infrastructure in Europe to simulate future spacewalks on the surfaces of the Moon and of Mars, and possibly also uh, the asteroids. Uh, in the context of the Moonwalk project, which is an European Union funded project, uh, Space Application Services is prototyping the spacesuit uh, human machine interfaces that will be installed in future spacesuits um, to uh, explore other planets. First, I will give a brief introduction about the current state of the art of uh, spacesuit control panels and information systems. Um, then we will look a little bit into the uh, constraints for extravehicular activity or EVA for planetary surface missions. Uh, afterwards, I will give an overview of the, what the Moonwalk project really is and uh, what, what the objectives of the Moonwalk project are. Uh, later, I will give uh, a brief uh, uh, introduction to what the Moonwalk human machine interface is and wants to accomplish. Um, later on, uh, I will show a little bit what the, what the current status of the, of, the, of the project is. The spacesuit control panels uh, and information systems uh, installed on current spacesuits and on uh, uh, previous spacesuits have been uh, evolving through uh, the 20th and 21st century. Um, there are many kinds of spacesuits and many uh, kinds of uh, systems that have been used in order to convey information to the astronaut. Um, I have a couple of examples that are remarkable in the context of our project. Um, I will show you a little bit the, the, the first one, which is the uh, control panel on the Crechet 94 space. It was designed in the 1960s in order uh, to provide information to the astronaut um, for the Russian, the Soviet moon mission. Um, it was designed for, for this mission, but of course you will know that uh, this mission never flew at the end. Uh, but it, it had a very interesting design uh, because it was a chess display that deployed from the spacesuit and uh, from which the astronaut could read information and input information. Um, it had buttons and uh, analog indicators on uh, what the battery of the spacesuit was, uh, what the CO2 uh, content in the, in the air was, what the oxygen level was, and uh, you could actuate certain parts of the spacesuit with this panel. Uh, so of course it never flew, but it was a very interesting concept that, that was never used in, in in, uh, in other space, this is the concept of the deployable panel. The current state of the art uh, for spacesuits, arguably the most advanced information system on a spacesuit, is the one in the NASA suit, uh, which is also called the Extravehicular Mobility Unit or e EMU. Uh, it is, of course, designed by NASA and uh, it has a series of switches and of indicators that are on the chest of the astronaut, uh, but they are fixed. Therefore, there's a, an issue there because you need <clears throat> to use a mirror that is on your wrist in order to view uh, what the, the indicators are, are showing, uh, what, the, what the switches that you need to turn. Um, you, need to, you need to look at things in, in the mirror. So it's, it's not, it's not extremely easy to use compared to, to for example, a deployable system. It also is it's difficult to convey a lot of information because you only have a small strip uh, with an alphanumeric display where you can uh, show information. Therefore, the amount of information that you uh, can show is, is, is relatively limited, which is sort of okay for current missions. Uh, on the International Space Station. Uh, in these missions, so for ISS, International Space Station, and shuttle missions, you have almost constant communication 
between the EVA crew and mission control. And the delay is practically zero, negligible for the, for the, for the purpose of operations. Um, you have uh, UHF radios doing the communications and, uh, and, and telemetry sent over the UHF link to the Earth. All this telemetry is continuously monitored by a team of flight controllers that look at what the current status of the astronaut is, what the oxygen levels are, uh, what the battery levels are, the, C the CO2 uh, removal status is, the temperature. It's all continuously monitored by mission control and not necessarily by the astronaut. The astronaut is really busy with the task at hand. Um, so not a lot of information needs to be conveyed in the, in the suit because it's being monitored by, by Earth. Also, the crew typically asks permission to proceed with certain steps in the EVA. So there needs to be this, uh, this, this continuous communication link with, with Earth. A lot of contrast with this, uh, we have the future planetary EVA missions where the operations are done with a communications delay which can go for the case of Mars uh, from about six, seven minutes to 20 minutes uh, before a message gets received on the other side. So that's, that's a, a big difference. Um, there is a reduced situational awareness at MCC because of this communications delay. You only know what happened seven minutes or 20 minutes ago and can react and and this, if you react, this communication will arrive to the astronaut seven minutes from then or 20 minutes from then. So it's, it, you will need more autonomy uh, for the crew. Uh, so more information will need to be conveyed to the crew uh, in an efficient and concise manner. Therefore, you need a different information system. Moreover, uh, during analog missions, which are what in fact we want to do in Moonwalk, but is being done by NASA, by uh, different agencies. Uh, mission control has resorted more to text messages and less to voice communication. In current systems, there is no way to convey these text messages. So um, this is something that uh, in Moonwalk we want to address. The Moonwalk project itself is a three-year cooperative research and development project funded by the European Commission under the space theme of the seventh framework program. Our goal in particular is creating in Europe the capability of simulating EVAs on the surface of planetary bodies, so the Moon or Mars or other bodies, uh, as well as studying scenarios of astronaut, astronaut and astronaut robot collaborations and compare them. Um, we will be conducting uh, analog simulations, uh, which are simulations that um, try to be as close as the real thing. Of course, they will never be exactly as a real thing, but we try to get as close. Uh, and we are doing them in Rio Tinto, in the desert, which will be an analog of the Martian surface. And in Marseille, in the bottom of the sea, which is an analog of the moon, because we, there we can simulate very well the partial gravity conditions of the moon, which are one-sixth of the Earth's gravity. For the Moonwalk project, we are developing uh, an astronaut uh, training suit, um, for, uh, for these uh, future extravehicular activities and uh, extravehicular activity information system, which is the, specifically the topic of our company, Space Applications, which is to be integrated in the training suit. We're also developing a mission control center uh, in Brussels, Belgium, to be able to support these analog simulations. And another member of the consortium is developing a rover that assists the astronaut during the extravehicular activities. We want to analyze this human-robot interaction. The EVA training suit is a novel EVA training suit that is being developed by a French company called Comex, uh, which is a diving company that also works in space. Um, it is based on the NASA Z1 suit, um, which is a concept that foresees that the astronaut enters to the suit from the backpack. Um, this is useful in that you can uh, enter the suit um, from uh, you can enter the suit without having to don it in an airlock. You re you eliminate the need for an airlock uh, 
which is this intermediate chamber between the habitat and the surface. You just enter from the rear of the suit, close the suit, and the suit separates from the habitat. Um, therefore, you can do this. Uh, you can do EVAs uh, rather quickly. Uh, Comex is making an exoskeleton with hard shell elements in glass and car carbon fiber composites uh, using different materials like neoprene and uh, poly polyoxymethylene. Uh, and it provides a mechanical movement restriction uh, on the joints uh, with some springs. This limits the movement of the astronaut in the same way that a real pressurized spacesuit uh, will. Um, this way, you can simulate at a relatively low cost the constraints of being in a spacesuit uh, in a very realistic manner without having to build a complete spacesuit and operate in it, which is very costly. The Institute, DFKI, is building a, a rover platform that is to support the crew during the EVAs. It is based on a heritage of the Asgard robot family. Um, and it's relatively small, 70 per 70 centimeters, five kilograms of payload capacity. It's more of a scouting robot that, that helps the astronaut ex explore through the use of a 360 degree field of view panoramic camera. It has a camera that records at any time the whole 360 view um, and People at mission control and people uh, that are on the field or in the habitat can pick exactly what they want to see from this 360 degree view, which is very useful. The rover is also uh, to be uh, uh, controlled with a gesture control system. The human machine interface in the Moonwalk project, as I said, is being developed by us. And uh, the objectives, as uh, I hinted before, are to improve the exchange of information between mission control and, uh, and the EVA crew uh, on surface operations. Uh, it will allow the control from the chest display of payloads and robots that are together with the astronaut in the planetary surface. And uh, another objective is to improve the situational awareness and autonomy of the extravehicular crew in these planetary missions. How do we do this? Through several technical features, uh, which are procedure viewing, Every astronaut on every EVA needs to follow a certain order of procedures. Uh, currently, it's done in a very relatively low-tech manner, which is, it works, but uh, it can be made more efficient using our current technology. Uh, we are developing a procedure viewer in which the astronaut will be able to change when it, uh, to change steps from the from one step to the next one, and mission control will be able to view exactly at what step the astronaut is at any time, uh, which is very useful. Uh, the astronaut will be able to take notes from the field, which is very important for geological work where you have samples and you need to take pictures of it and you need to record video and you need to record maybe just some voice notes to remind you what you were looking at uh, in a field excursion. Uh, it will be able to dis uh, deliver a video stream from the field to um, MCC uh, to the other astronaut um, and video from the rover to the astronaut so that the astronaut can send the rover uh, to scout a place and can view in his chest what, uh, what the rover is doing. Uh, it will have also some text messages. Uh, when you're in a suit, it's very, it would be very difficult to uh, input text with a normal keyboard. Therefore, the text that comes from the EVA uh, uh, crew to mission control or to the habitat will need some pretty fine buttons with are quite lar large buttons on the screen where uh, pretty fine messages can be sent just uh, I'm okay I have a problem or I need to go back to the habitat really important messages that can be conveyed just to the push of a button uh, and the crew will be able to receive text messages as notes from mission control which is useful uh, if you don't want to memorize everything that they are telling you in the, in the voice loops. Um, it will have voice communications, of course, um, both streaming, but also it has been found out that uh, it is very hard to communicate with this communications delay when you have seven minutes. Imagine if you are in, in a phone and uh, everything that you say is heard seven minutes later by your other, by your counterpart. 
it would be really hard to work. So a better way to do this and with communications delays to record a message like a, like a voicemail message that then can be played by the astronaut in the spacesuit and can be heard at any time. Um, the human machine interface also implements robot control to the use, through the use of push buttons. So on the chest display or wrist display that I will show later, you can push a button where you can tell the rover what to do and you can see a video stream of the rover. You will also be able to control the rover through gestures such as indicating the rover to go somewhere um, in a way that you don't need to push any button, you just need to indicate the rover where to go, which is quite interesting. You will also have a display that you can use in emergency situations which has, will have particularly large buttons and that will be very visible. Um, this was created uh, in case the astronaut loses voice communications of things of the sort, they can still communicate with the other crew member and with mission control. This is a little bit of a mock-up that we have of the, of the um, GUI, so the user interface of the human-machine uh, interface. Uh, on the top, you can see very important telemetry uh, that needs to be seen at any time by the astronaut, as well as cautions and warnings. Cautions and warnings are uh, already used in the International Space Station. When you get this yellow message, it means that you have uh, an issue that you need to take care of uh, relatively uh, in a short time. If you get a red message, of course, uh, you, will, uh, you will imagine that this is a higher priority message, which is called a warning. You really need to take action, and uh, we are conveying this information about the spacesuit, about the systems in the spacesuit, and about the rover, uh, so that the astronaut knows and is aware at any time if there is any issue and doesn't have to uh, rely on mission control to spot these issues. They are very prominently shown in the screen. On the bottom you can see you have a procedure viewer, table of contents for the, all the procedures and all the documents that the astronaut might need to see during an autonomous EVA. Um, Note-taking capabilities, voice and text communication capabilities, caution and warning, uh, more detailed uh, information on the caution and warnings telemetry that comes from the rover, so indication of how the rover is doing, if it uh, has uh, low battery, if it has any issue, you will be able to see it from there. And uh, also a view to control the rover, which is the one that you see right now, in which the rover has different modes that you can um, select and operate with. And uh, at the end, a very accessible button that you can push at any time. If you have an emergency, can communicate via audio and you need to convey some information to your colleagues. So for the Moonwalk project, uh, we had some, 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 some requirements which are uh, for our system, which are the capability to introduce variable communication delays. We want to be able to train astronauts for missions on the moon, uh, on Mars, or on an asteroid. Therefore, we need to change the delays because for each uh, of these planetary bodies, we will have different delays. Uh, we need to, the capability to introduce mock telemetry and cautions and warnings to train the astronaut to react to them. So we introduce, for example, radiation profiles that um, in a simulated manner, because on Earth you are okay with the radiation that is uh, on Earth in the bottom of the sea or in, uh, in the desert, it simulates the accumulated uh, radiation and you can introduce, for example, uh, a radi and more intense radiation activity that increases your radiation levels, your acute radiation levels, and the suit can indicate you there's a lot of radiation that you have absorbed, you need to get back to the habitat right now. And this can be used for the purposes of training astronauts uh, to react to, uh, let's say, kind of emergency situation or off nominal situations that you might encounter. Our uh, human machine interface has to be operational at minus 20 meters under the sea, which is not a, not a small matter. Uh, we need to waterproof a lot of electronics in order to, for astronauts to be able to train underwater in the partial gravity conditions. Another requirement that we have is we want to deliver the most advanced system that is possible so we cannot build things from scratch and I believe we shouldn't build things from scratch so therefore we leverage state-of-the-art consumer 
technology which is really advanced, such as tablets and smartphones we can code for, um, there, is, uh, there are currently a lot of projects that uh, are aiming to send this consumer technology to space. Um, there are cell phones that have already flown uh, to space. Uh, therefore, we thought, why not using smartphones and tablets for uh, this kind of display we, we, uh, so that we can leverage this high-tech uh, capability. The human-machine interface in the real spacesuit uh, will need to be either inside the spacesuit or outside the spacesuit. So, in the, in the system that we designed, it will be outside the spacesuit. And what this helps is the fact that you don't need to design electronics that operate in a high oxygen, um, so highly flammable environment. So they are outside in, in vacuum in the real suit, therefore you don't need to, to account for this high oxygen level, which is also not a small matter. Um, as I said, the Moonwalk Mission Control Center uh, is being created in Brussels to support uh, the, the EVA, uh, of the humans and the robot, to control the robot from mission control. And the, one of the main components that we have in the Moonwalk uh, HMI is what we call a suit computer, suit computer assembly, which is a computer that is in the backpack of the spacesuit and performs the processing of the, of the human machine interface, but also of biomonitoring sensors that check whether the astronaut is in good condition or if it's under a lot of stress so that mission control can monitor as well that and provide some feedback or the people in intravehicular uh, inside the, the uh, planetary modules um, can support the astronaut from a, from a biomedical point of view. Um, and as well, the suit computer assembly houses the rover gesture control, uh, which is used for uh, indicating the rover uh, where to go or what to do uh, with gestures. Um, in the case of Marseille, we, we, con we connect this computer through a umbilical to the, to the surface of the sea so that we can uh, get communications with it. Um, and also, suit computer assembly is quite modular. We are using USB interfaces so that you can plug pretty much anything to it. Uh, if you want new sensors, if you want new peripherals, new information systems, you can connect to it. So we're designing it to be pretty modular. Um, the human machine interface has three main forms that we're testing and we're seeing which of these, we will be seeing which of these during the analog trials is the best way to convey information. We're going to have a chess display. The chess display is practically an iPad, so uh, it will be this, it's similar to the Russian suit that we saw at the beginning. However, you need to take into account that the astronaut is wearing these bulky gloves, therefore you need to make really large buttons as well. Uh, you need to take some, um, you need to implement some certain uh, uh, technologies, if you will, in order for the gloves to be able to operate on a touch screen. Um, in the stored configuration, it will be flat at the chest and it will be deployed and it's deployed in front of the face of the astronaut, um, allowing the astronaut to interact with it just like you would do with an iPad. The other configuration that we have is the wrist display. The wrist display is practically a screen on the wrist of the astronaut that is controlled with an array of mechanical buttons. We found out that the screen is really hard to operate with a touch screen, therefore because the buttons would be too small. Therefore, we have some mechanical push buttons around that allow to navigate the interface. And we also have the heads up display, which is a display that is permanently in front of the astronaut and that shows the information at any time. But it's very similar to a wrist display, it's just the location that changes. So we're trying to compare these three setups to see which is the best. And with which one we should move forward in developments in the, in the future to develop the real uh, space of the information system. So the current status of the, of, uh, the HMI is the software is almost complete. Uh, chess display has been integrated with the training suit. Uh, we already did uh, some integrated tests in the pool with this suit that you, that you are looking at. Uh, you can see the chest display on, in front of the astronaut. You can see a camera, a helmet camera, 
on the right side of the suit. And uh, right in front of the suit, you can see the suit computer assembly with all the parts in this waterproof casing that, that it's in the, in the backpack. Uh, we're going to be continuing the developing in the, in the following months. Um, and uh, we're going to have field trials in Rio Tinto in Spain where we, in, in April, where we will be connected to the HERA habitat in Johnson Space Center as well as to the Mission Control Center in Brussels uh, conducting these CVA simulations. That's in Rio Tinto in Spain and then in Marseille in the bottom of the sea uh, in May, June 2016 where we will conduct these uh, field trials with the suit and all the, all the infrastructure, rover, human machine interface. This is a picture of the pool integration test that we did in Marseille. So practically we sent this suit to the bottom of the pool uh, with a test subject inside. And um, with the chest display, we successfully operated the rover. The, uh, the test subject successfully operated the rover in the bottom of the pool. And the rover was also successfully operated from mission control in Brussels. So uh, that's, uh, that's uh, quite some nice advancement. Um, here you see the test subject in the bottom of the pool and uh, on the backpack you can see the suit computer assembly with all the electronics that uh, we need to run the human machine interface and the chest display. Iver needs to be uh, assisted by safety divers that are around, uh, around uh, him or her. Uh, finally, this is, the, this is the setup in Marseille where the astronaut was uh, operating the rover that you see in front with the chest display and he was looking at the video uh, in, the, in the screen and uh, it uh, worked all uh, really well and we are looking forward to, um, to the field trials which will be uh, the, the most uh, interesting part likely of the, of the project where we will push our systems and test them in the field and do our own analysis to see which one of the human machine interfaces are, are uh, the best and uh, to see and analyze how operating with uh, a robot in the field improves the capability of a human uh, on a planetary surface. So with that I conclude and thank you very much.